Good morning, everybody. I want to go on um, to help people to understand the difficult things about the Bible. Because I have, of course, my view. And the funny thing is, is that somehow or another, everything that I, that I see has to, has to fit. It has, there's no such thing as a square peg in a round hole for me. So when you tell me that the Bible is perfectly axiomatic and it needs to, and it's, there's only apparent contradictions, then when you start to show me the apparent contradictions that are in the scriptures or whatnot, and you reconcile them, what I don't want to see is square peg, round hole, play twister to say, you know, like almost like I'm an operator and I've got, well, it all, it, it, it all fits, you know, it looks great. So let me take this wire here and stick it over there and plug that one over here and do this and that and the other with the scriptures and see how they fit. I want, if I'm told that the scriptures absolutely agree with themselves, then they need to fit like a glove. They don't need to be apparent and twisted and see, I can try to explain how they work and then you have to believe that. Because honestly, I don't believe you're stupid and so, <laughs> and you shouldn't believe that I take it for granted that I'm dumb enough to believe something like that. You've got to show me something that's straightforward. And this is what I see about the scriptures. Back in the time of the, the writings of the scriptures, because the scriptures that we have are, have come through years of, first of all, nobody followed Jesus around with a pen. These things were written afterwards. And there were people at the time, it's undeniable, who were Judaizers. There were the Jewish believers. Now let me clarify who these people were. I have Asperger's Syndrome. This condition makes me a very analytical person. I become obsessive with every little thing. If you were to give me a flower, I love to smell the roses, it's, it's nice. But I would be like some of these people who would measure the flower's circumference, who would, who would take each petal and graph it and find out every little molecule and its medicinal purposes and look at the way the sap runs and what the pH level of the flower is. But I'd never be able to see the flower for the beauty of what it is. Let's take a look at this fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. What is this fruit? It's the same analytical fruit. It's blindness to the big picture and accepting this perfectionism that basically causes confusion. This is what Satan did. When man ate of this fruit, he became the scholar. Let's take a look at the Bible. The Bible is a great book. But, and it's a great thing that it has numbers in it, but do you notice that every verse in the Bible is numbered? Think about it. Is that the work of a person who is, sees it as a picture? Or someone who's trying to take it apart for its every little piece to try to analyze it, to make it all work and fit? You understand that this was the Pharisees at the time the Pharisees were Jewish. Let me tell you a little bit about the Jews, the Kabbalists. I've listened to them. You know what they do? They start to go over every little letter in the Bible. And every single word is taken apart and has some sort of meaning. Like the letter Aleph. Aleph is the A. Aleph, my son, my disciple, my pupil, is the first letter in the word, the Hebrew word, Aish. And Aish, Aish is the first part of heaven because Aish is fire. And the Mem, the Mem, of course, is Mayim, which means water. Aish Shemayim. Shemayim means heaven. And when we look at the A and the M together, the fire and the water together, it gives you this perfect balance of hot and cold. And you see that that this is what our God is, hot and cold. 
And when you have hot and cold running water, you can't have one or the other. You must have Aish or Shemayim. And when you wash your Panim, your face, you're washing your face with heaven. And that's why your face is heavenly. Do you see how it starts to go nuts? <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to tell you that the Bible is like a Monet. When I look at the Bible, it does not have to be taken apart letter for letter. I see what happened in the garden. I see what happened at the Tower of Babel. I see that Babylon's where these Pharisaical Jews came from. I see that there were people who, who want to exalt themselves in this follow the letter. Greece is the perfect, perfect idea of this. All of the great scholars, the, when you take a look at your Bible scholars today, they're they, they want to be professors, so you should listen to me because I'm a professor in, in, in theology. Well, this is what the rabbi wants to say. <laughs> they have thrown away the Holy Spirit to give you the rabbi. Well, we're professors in this. You ought to listen to us. So they've made themselves out to be the gods. Do you see my point here? I'll go on with it later.